From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impe Presents. As always, I feel that probably this is the most important program every week I say that, that we can present to you because so much is happening out there. Listen to this first headline that really moves my heart. Spiritual discernment. You know, there is so much deceit behind the pulpits today. So much just not saying anything behind the pulpits today. We need to be discerning what is right and what is wrong. And then here, somebody said this, and I think it's very important that we pay attention to it. Islam is a false religion. Now, who in the world would have the courage to say that? And is it right? We're going to elaborate on that in a moment. And then Egypt Christians need help. Now, you know, there are 130 countries where Christians need help. Out of the 247 countries in the world, 130 are persecuting the Christians around the world. We need to pay attention and pray for them and help them if we can. And uh, I was saying to Jack just before we went on, you know, I, I love this time of year. I look out my kitchen window and I see all the trees turning and it's just gorgeous here. And we see that fall is here. And then I said to Jack, it kind of points to something that's coming. You know, winter is on the horizon. And Jesus gave us uh, a signs to look for what's coming in the future. Didn't he, Jack? Oh, Rexella, Jesus in the four Gospels mentioned all these different signs. And he said, when you see them all, I'm right at the door. I'm coming for the rapture to snatch you home in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now you find all those signs he mentioned in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 17 and 21. And we're going to really get into them. And by the way, very soon, I'm going to show you that in every New Testament book, 27 of them, Jesus says in every one of those books, I'm the way, the truth, life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Some of you false prophets out there preaching other ways to heaven. You can't get there without Jesus. You can't get there with Allah. You can't get there with Buddha. You can't get there with Muhammad. You get them through Jesus, period. Amen. Boy, and that's exactly what the Bible teaches, isn't it? That is true doctrine of the first century believers, friends were inundated with false doctrine. They had many teachers that were not saying the truth. And I would like for you to see this first headline. It's very, very important for today. Spiritual discernment. Now the Apostle John had something to say about that. He said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they're of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, you know, that they had it back then. The first century Christians, why so many were coming around and saying, no, that's not the way. Jesus is not the way. You can get there other ways. And Jack, that's just not the way it is, is it? This is the only way you get spirit of discernment because God, the Holy Spirit, breathed upon all the men who wrote this book. And so he gave them the correct words. And that's Second Peter 1 Peter 1.21. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so when we get into this book, 
will be straight. Thy word have I hidden in my heart mm. that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. You are clean through the word. John 15, verse 3. Oh, we have so many false Christs and false prophets today. They're in our churches next week or in the next two weeks. I'm going to tell you about the Yale Covenant. And now there are 444 Christian preachers in all denominations who have accepted the fact that Jesus did not die on a cross and that the name of our God, Allah, you bunch of blasphemers, hell isn't going to be hot enough for you. And I mean it. Now, isn't that exactly what the Apostle Peter said 2,000 years ago in 2 Peter 2, 1? He says, there were false prophets among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, secretly shall bring a damnable heresies, even denying Jesus that bought them. You deny Jesus and it'll be a hot hell for you. Do you know what they teach in the Quran? Eight different times, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God or there's a trinity, you'll burn in hell forever. You know what my Bible says? Anyone who says he's not the Son of God is an antichrist. Sorry, you Muslims, but that's what God calls all of you, through the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. We have to go by the Holy yes. Spirit. You know what, friends, I wish I, I could write a book. You know what, really, if I had time to do it, who's who in Christianity? I think, Jack, you'll be right up at the top. Who's who? You stand for the Bible. And and you I, too, baby. Well, yes, I do. You are some Bible teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and you know who else? I put my brother in there, Dr. Yeah. Robert Shelton. Yeah. He's always been a great Bible teacher. Yeah. There are many, and I like to talk about others that are on the scene right now. This first one really impressed me. Mike Pence. You know what he said when he was uh, going to become nominated for the vice, vice presidency? He said, I'm a born-again Christian, I'm an American, and I'm a Republican. In that order. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for that wonderful testimony. You get Trump, you got Pence, and he's a born-again Christian. And I'm hearing some great things of what's going on in the heart of Trump. He is meeting with some of my own friends who know the word, and I think soon you're going to hear that he's prayed the prayer and he's come to Jesus. You know, I'm sick of you Christians who say, oh, but he did something that wasn't very nice. I'm going to tell you something. We got a Jesus who shed his blood to wash away every sin. And you know, they took a woman who was caught in adultery. Kill her! That's the public. Jesus looked at them and said, let him or her who's without sin cast the first stone. And they all took off like they were at Indianapolis for the racetrack. And you folks who criticize hmm. because Trump did that. I got something God told me today. This is the guy who owned the beauty contest. You haven't heard any of those women say anything that he tried something. And he ran this show on Sunday nights of movie stars. You haven't heard them say he's tried something. It's just a bunch of women who want a little authority. And I've already found two places where they have lied about this man. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never met him. I don't know him. But if you want to be free because... Uh, Wall Street Journal says we're getting ready to be atom bombed by foreign nations. Wow. As I preached a few weeks ago, these Muslims are going to try to kill us. Pray about it because America is in trouble. God save America. Get us the right person after this election. Please, God, please. Uh, somebody else that wants you to pray, not telling you what to do, but pray. And that is Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. And he says, Decision America Tour. Now, he went into every single state, and he went to the capitals, and he said, pray, pray. All 50. Yes, all 50 about what we should do. Now, I'm going to divert here for just a moment, because this is something that he said. Globally known evangelist Franklin Graham says, President Obama is so sympathetic to those of the Muslim faith, he's actually endangering Jews, 
Christians, opening the doors for them to be persecuted in the United States. And that is absolutely true. Is that not right, Jack? Oh, he's a great man of God. And Billy, I just have to say this. I started with him in Canada. London, Ontario. I was 17 years of age. He said to me, if I could play the accordion like you do, I'd quit preaching. What a man of God and how many tens of thousands have come to know Jesus through him. And he has a great son there too. Yes, he does. Absolutely. Now, uh, someone else that I would like for you to take a look at, please. And it is pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, uh, Robert Jeffress. And this is what he had to say. And uh, amen. Pastor, Islam is a false religion from Satan. A false religion. Now, remember right up front we said you needed to try the teachers because many false religions would come in near, just before the coming of the Lord. Jack, he's warning everybody about oh, I that. Know. This brother is one of the greatest preachers. He took my spot when I was on a deathbed. And I just love this man of God, and he takes a stand for the Lord. And by the way, what he is saying is correct. This religion called Islam is tied in with demonic powers. Who said so? The Holy Spirit of God in this book. Now, let me tell you something. Allah said, and that's their God, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God or a member of the Trinity, you'll burn in hell forever. Where is that found? This is the Quran, Surah, chapter 4, 5, 6, 9, uh, 17, 19, 23, and 88. You'll never see heaven if you believe that. And what are you going to do with the Father, Jehovah, Matthew 6, 3? For he said often, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. You're going to take Jehovah and throw him into hell too? Our God of Judaism? And Christianity. I'll tell you, here's what the Bible says about you, and Jeffers is right. And that, of course, is 1 John 2, 22. If you say that Jesus is not the Son of God, you're an antichrist, and so that's all you Muslims running around teaching blasphemy, that he didn't die on a cross, that he's not the Savior of the world. Oh, you know, Jack, I understand even more now why the Bible says, try the spirits whether they have got false teachers out there, we've got to be very, very careful. Do you recall during the Clinton Democratic Convention, there was a gentleman and his wife, Mr. Khan, uh, who played quite a, an important role there, and our hearts were very moved by what he had to say when he spoke about his son dying in the service of our country. Now, his son was very patriotic. And certainly our hearts went out to them as we heard about this. But then something really hit me. Take a look at this headline. Khan believes the Constitution must always be subordinate to Sharia. Now that's Sharia law. You know, friends, that really shocked me, and I think it's going to shock you too. But Jack, would you like to add something and, and then read that to us, please? The greatest deception that has ever been perpetrated in America by anyone who claims they want to be president was by Hillary Clinton. God forgive her. They had this man, and we all felt sorry for him, and I appreciated what he said about his precious son. But who killed him? The Americans are fighting the Muslims, you know, and he was on the American side. I wonder who killed him. Now let me get into the meat of this. This man is truly wanting nothing to do with Christianity. Did you know what Sharia law is? Number one, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Number two, you kill every homosexual. Number three, you kill every apostate. That's one of your own who, if he doesn't agree with everything, in the Quran or about Allah, they put him to death. And that's why Shiites and Sunnis, two groups within Islam, have murdered 100 million among themselves, their own people. And by the way, this Khan, if they carried it out because he is the one that pushes Shia law, left Pakistan because he didn't want to be the army. That's a death threat. 
Now let's go a little farther. Number four, they kill Christians. Now I want to show you something, Rexella, before we get into the article. We've had 20 headlines we're going to use. We'll never get into them. I did away with 2,500 pieces of letters this week. I got over 500 where they kill Christians all over this world. But I wanted to get just the ones for 2016. Here are 200 letters slaughtering Christians by hanging them and boiling them in oil and throw, throwing them in acid. God help America and Christianity. Oh, yes. God bless America. We need to be praying, don't we, friends? Really pray about all of these things we're talking about today. Now, uh, Jack, would you like to read that article? It's very important. Chris Kahn believes that the Constitution must always be subordinated to Sharia. Bunk! And he wants that for every nation to give up their laws for their laws. Notwithstanding his war hero son's genuinely patriotic example, Chris M. Khan has published papers supporting the supremacy of Islamic law over man-made Western law, including the very Constitution he championed in his Democratic National Convention speech, GOP presidential nod Donald Trump. In 1983, for example, Khan wrote a glowing review of a book compiled from a seminar held in Kuwait called Human Rights in Islam, in which he singles out for praise the keynote address of fellow Pakistani Alan K. Brewer, a pro-jihad Islamic jurist who was one of the closest advisors to the late Pakistani dictator General Haig, the father of the Taliban movement, another murderous movement. Khan speaks admiringly of Brown's interpretation of human rights, even though it included the right to kill and mutilate those who violate Islamic laws and even the right of men to beat wives who act unseemly. Khan questions Trump's understanding of the Constitution, calling him ignorant. He's not an ignorant man. He'd be ignorant if he accepted this Sharia law that you were pushing on all America because of you, Hillary. Let's go on and suggesting that if Trump had studied it, he would never propose imposing a temporary ban on the Muslim immigration to protect the nation from ISIS and other terrorist infiltrators. Bunk! He's one of the smartest men I've ever listened to. Cain isn't. Trump is. Now, let me tell you this. Since the year 800, these Muslims have murdered 300 million Christians, and that comes from the lips of Mark Gabriel and the great school there in Egypt, and now a converted Muslim. Rexella, they slaughter. I want you to show them what this Hillary pushed when she gave that guy all that money to come in and push what she thought was the Constitution. Boy, if Scully were around, he'd take care of this bird. I agree with you 100%. We need another one on the Supreme Court like him. Well, let me just say that Jack has talked about Sharia law to us. I'm going to go through and just give you a few headlines here about Sharia law. How can you and I and your family be prepared? Is it coming to North America? Shedding light on honor killing. Now, that has to do with killing your daughters. Pakistan girl marries for love, gets incinerated by mother again, that's the killing their daughters. Parents kill pregnant woman for honor in Pakistan. Honor killing? Are you kidding? Wrong boyfriend. Going on here, the homosexuals. It's on the jihad against homosexuals. Take a look. Behead, burn, and crush gays. Islamic preacher to deliver 10 days of lectures in London. Oh, my. And then here we have how they hate each other, a sharper schism between the Sunnis and the Shiites. Again, this uh, Sunni Shiite split spills over and they're killing each other. This is from Iraq. Uh, ISIL burns own members alive on charges of fleeing the battlefields. And Khan did other. that. He left Pakistan so he wouldn't have to go into the army. So yeah. they should put him under the death threat. And here we are again between a Shiite and Sunni place. America can't risk taking sides in the latest Middle East confrontation. 
Now you can see how they hate each other, friends. We have dealt now very, very quickly three of the four things that Jack mentioned about Sharia law. Jack, you want to say something about this last one just before we go on? Saudi Arabia is Sunni. Iran is Shiite. They hate one another so much that the Saudis just said, all those people there in Iran are not Muslims, they're fake, so let's kill them. All the things they've been doing in Germany, they raped 500 women on New Year's Eve in the name of God. Sarkozy has just said, out of France, he's taken them out of a jungle camp. And now, right here in Waterford, Michigan, they voted not to allow these people in. They don't want them there. All right, Jack. Now, just very, very quickly, the fourth thing that Jack dealt with about Sharia law concerning Christians. Please, take a look here. Christians herded into the sea and gunned down. Now, that was just outside of a prominent hotel. Christian refugees in Turkey hide their religion in fear. China sees sevenfold increase in persecution against Christians. ISIS is guilty of anti-Christian genocide. And then Egypt Christians need help. Now, I could go on and on, friends. I have so many more here. And Jack showed you a whole 200 packet. 200? Yes. Just for this year. 130 countries where they're being persecuted. Oh, how we need to pray for Christians around the world, Amen. Jack. Amen. And you know, Jack, this brings us to a time where we must say, this is all pointing to the coming of the Lord. The Lord is coming back, isn't he, very oh, soon? Oh, every sign is here, and I'm going to be preaching about that the next few weeks. But I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We are in trouble. The Wall Street Journal said four of these Muslim nations are getting ready to heave atomic bombs into the United States of America. And the newspaper said the only one who could deal with it is Hillary, not Trump. Really? She did a great job in Benghazi trying to protect four people, but she didn't try, and they're dead. Jack, I just want to say, in the light of the coming of the Lord, I always ask this, and this is really why we're there in your home or wherever you're watching this program. We want you to be ready for the coming of the Lord. That's our main goal on this program, is that you will open your heart to the Lord. Jesus is the Son of God. He did die for us. He died for you. Will you accept him as your Savior right now? Jack, pray that wonderful prayer. Oh, Father, if there are Muslim people listening, may they turn to Jesus today. Forget what their teachers have said at Jesus. There are many good people among them if they had Jesus in their heart. And people say, oh, why aren't they speaking up? Because it's a death threat if they do. So they keep quiet in wherever they're living here in America. But oh, for others, all these Christians have been killed and will be killed. Lord, bring a great Holy Ghost revival throughout Europe and throughout the Muslim nations and win these people. Lord, you've given us three million souls uh, just within the next 22,000 who come to Jesus. And it's so simple. Lord Jesus, you died for me on the cross. You shed your precious blood to wash away every sin I've ever committed. Even every Christian I've killed, you care enough to say, I forgive you, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry for what I've done. Come into my heart. Save me. And Lord Jesus, bless the United States of America, my homeland. If you're a Christian here in America, pray it. God bless America. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. If you made that decision, there's my address. Please write me. I'll send you this little book, Absolutely Free, First Steps in a New Direction. If you would love to have a DVD, Hearing the Truth or Is It a Lie? And my gift with it, The War on Truth, just hear what Chuck Oman has to say. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 
to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to emphasize, don't put off getting this wonderful offer. You know, friends, we need to be living the life and let other people know what God can do for them. In telling others what Christ can do for them, tell them what he has done for you. We're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, always remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very much.